one we have Jay Z in the NFL deal. Now this is old news. I'm sure to most of you guys out there, but um, yeah, it's a bit cons- it's a bit confusing this whole Jay Z and NFL deal. Now again, I'm I think the whole racial tension thing, or you know the the issue of police brutality in the US is something that I know has been spoken about ad nauseum for the most part, but it's still an issue that's very permeant within the minds of loads of probably black entertainers in the US because I guess with the NFL being predominantly a black, you know, sport for the most part, you know, it's represented by a lot of black people in there. There's a lot of power, a lot of influence a lot of money that they're driving into that uh, franchise or into that sports organization, whatever you may call it, into that league, which then is making them big bucks. To feel as if like they're powerless to enact any sort of change must be a bit hard to take. So I understand in the entertainment side of things where they need to kind of, you know, um, let's say they need to uh, put their foot down in some way, shape or form or have some way, shape or form of protesting and showing their kind of discontent, right? Showing how unhappy they are with the current state of affairs. So I guess when Colin Kaepernick finally took that knee and decided to kind of take a stand, everyone sort of rallied behind him because they're like, okay, cool. We don't have influence maybe where it matters in the courts and the judicial system and the police force and stuff. But what we can do is maybe bring awareness to this issue and then maybe hopefully with that awareness, you're able to kind of curtail it into some real action. But, you know, unfortunately in life, I think as I've learned, as I think most people have learned, the older you get, you can't really control how people interpret what you do. Right, or you can't really control people's reaction to what you do. So, as um, pure and as well intentioned Colin Kaepernick's um, protest was, and sometimes you know, maybe it might have not been the most purest thing in the world, maybe it might be quite self serving, right? Maybe he was a player that was on the wane who was kind of recognizing on and was um, able to recognize that. And in this really hyper aware personal brand era, he wanted to kind of you know change his trajectory. And sort of position himself as a sort of like freedom fighter, right? There's, there is that kind of thinking behind it. I understand that. But let's say, let's give him the benefit of that. Let's say he was have he went into with pure intentions, right? He tried to do well. He tried to do the right thing. But unfortunately, he couldn't control the reaction of the others. So um, the police force, the army, for the most part, right? Mostly army and the police force kind of took his not um, standing for the national anthem and kneeling instead as disrespect. Because I think, first of all, he started off sitting down, didn't he, right? Then he spoke to a former vet. Um, he had a kind of consultation with him, the former vet kind of pulled him to one side. Something you don't really hear of too often, right? I don't think we even got the former vet on TV. I'm not too sure if he even appeared on video. But we always get a lot of um, haranguing or hand wringing or a lot of uh, uh, telling off in public, right? We don't really get a lot of adults in entertainment actually pulling each other to one side outside of the limelight, away from the cameras, away from TMZ, and just kind of giving uh, their friend, um, their comrade, uh, somebody within the you know there's in the same sphere as them some kind of heartfelt advice that hasn't got any sort of tinge of self-righteousness doesn't really happen too often everything's always to the public right so this soldier does the great thing and sort of like point to one side and says hey you sitting down is not a good way to go about things you should just kneel instead right that's that's respectful so he starts to kneel and still the conversation does the, still the conversation gets completely derailed by this idea that he's disrespecting the flag Look at what they've given him. Um, it's a privilege thing. You've got people like Jason Whitlock coming after his neck. You've got guys on Fox. Like, people just got, you know, completely destroying him. And so much so, it got to a point where the NFL, who are notoriously um, coy and notoriously afraid of getting involved in any sort of, like, drama. I think if you've been following the NFL, just from... I didn't follow the NFL in terms of a sport. I just follow it in terms of just kind of, like, you know, the business of it. And if you've seen any kind of player get in trouble for a DUI, domestic abuse, um, animal cruelty, um, gambling, or just whatever crime that may had that may have kind of garnered a negative response from the public, what you'll see immediately is the NFL team drop that player, right? They don't want any drama. They are drama ad- adverse. They're very aware. Of, maybe it's because of the fact that they have so many me- p- players in one team, right? There's like 36 people. So maybe, is it 36 players? I don't know. There's a lot of players in the NFL team. So maybe because there's so many players in the NFL team, they're very aware and very cognitive that if they have one bad apple on a team, he could potentially rot the whole the whole squad, basically, right? He could um, kind of upset the whole apple cart, for lack of a better term. So they're not very adverse to kind of, you know, riding through storms. So it wasn't that much of a surprise and um, Colin Kaepernick didn't get picked up by any NFL side. I didn't think at the time. I didn't necessarily see it as a racial thing where it could be interpreted as that. I just saw it as a thing of like NFL teams being afraid to stand by or to stand behind or to stand beside anyone. 
and kind of, you know, say, look, no, we got him. We respect his cause. Even if it's something as noble as what he's doing, right? Because they know how it can be interpreted. They're aware of the amount of sponsors they have and the things behind the scenes. I don't know. It just didn't seem that surprising to me. But over time, the surprising thing was that he didn't sign for absolutely anybody. I thought there would be a bit of a lull, like maybe, you know, some teams will kind of, you know, want distance themselves with him. But I thought maybe as soon as the kind of, um, you know, as soon as things kind of settle down and everyone stopped getting hysterical, that maybe a team will come out of the woodwork and say, hey, you know what? We like this guy. He's better than most of our sta- uh, standby dudes. Let's get him a contract or let's give him a job. And that never happened. So that was a bit strange. But then the other strange thing that happened was that soon after that, or not soon after that, maybe a f- couple of years later, Colin Kaepernick then ends up settling with the NFL, right? I think he sued the NFL because he um, and his lawyers kind of deduced that maybe there was some sort of racial bias that came into effect in terms of him not getting a job. And I think him and his lawyer kind of sued Roger Goodell on, and the NFL um, for what they deem to be um, racism in some way, shape or form. I don't know what the exact charge was, but let's just bear with me, right? But the weird thing about it, when they when they um, went to court, they settled and Colin Kaepernick never came out and said the terms of his settle, settlement, right? We never heard about it. I think we heard some rumours through the great band. It wasn't as much as we thought it was. But we never really heard what happened. He just kind of carried on, you know, doing his whole silent protest. Not silent protest, but, you know, doing doing his kind of work that he thinks is going to be of benefit to his cause, right? Um, his sort of like, quote unquote, actionable item to borrow a turn from Chance the Rapper. But we never really heard an explanation from why exactly he decided to do that, right? We never really got an explanation. And I think from, again, I don't think you're, you owe anyone an explanation of, about why you're doing a certain thing. But there is something about the fact that it was such a public affair. It was such so, it was something that was played out so much in public. It was something that he intentionally did do as a public protest in order to kind of garner some attention that, you know, you might owe some of the people that are, you know, especially the Black Lives Matter people who are who are riding for him during the whole protest. You might owe them an explanation, but it never came around. So now we have we are in a situation we're in now with Jay-Z now suddenly partnering up with the NFL in terms of providing them with um, entertainment um, options for the halftime show and other sort of like wider sort of like socio um, economical racial kind of issue consultation sort of thing. A really kind of complex deal that no one really has any idea about, right? We don't really have any details on it. It's just a, something we kind of got announced. We saw Jay-Z sitting down with Roger Goodell in a room full of loads of influential black kind of uh spokes per people or intellectuals or activists whatever it may be called and for the most part it seems like a good idea right it seems like you know what you want to get a seat at the table that's all that anyone asks for right when all that blackface stuff comes out about gucci you're not i'm not screaming from the tail sides oh my god gucci you're so racist la, la, la. it's just sad because you know for sure they don't have anyone in their entire organization who's able to recognize that that jumper might have been a bad look right so what you want is to sit at the table so you can just kind of consult and kind of lend an ear or lend a word uh, behind a brand that you feel has got a lot of its weight or a lot of its uh, prestige through, you know, specifically the buying decisions of uh, minority people. So the fact that JG did this deal, I didn't think it was a big deal, but the, the fallback, the backlash from it has been very interesting to read. And I think this goes to show just how important it is for people that are doing things to essentially put the blinders on and continue doing the the thing as opposed to just you know commentating and you know signing off about it on social media and stuff because you know he's finally one of our uh, if there's anybody within the hip-hop or black community who we'd want to sit down with the nfl and to kind of sort that mess out or to uh have some sort of influence right would be jay-z right of all the of all the people that we have within our sphere of black activists or you know, whatever it may be called, it'll be Jay-Z. He's done so much work out of of sight, out of mind that people aren't aware of silently, right? He's done so much work publicly um, fighting for black issues that he should be owed some kind of grace, you'd think, right? Some kind of, he should be given the benefit of doubt. If if anyone should give him the benefit of doubt, it's probably Jay-Z, but he's got none so far. And it's been strange because I think on one side, you got Colin Kaepernick's side, I think, who are saying that Jay-Z never spoke to them. Okay, Jay-Z doesn't have a, he doesn't need to speak to them really, to be honest, to be brutally honest. And on Jay-Z's side, you've got this decision where it's like, no, like, we've done the protesting, we've done the kneeling, we've done the whole hysterics online, right? Not hysterics, but, you know, we've done all the stuff that we can do, making noise on social media. Now it's time for action. Now it's the next phase, right? And um, this kind of um, article on BBC sort of, like, again, details just how confusing this whole situation is because Colin Kaepernick's lawyer then come out and said uh, rapper Jay-Z is cold-blooded. So I read this article to you. It says the following. Uh, Jay-Z's decision to partner with the NFL 
has been described um, as cold-blooded. Uh, Mark um, Gregeros, the lawyer of American football player Colin Kaepernick, told ABC News that the deal crosses the intellectual picket line. Jesus Christ, man. These uh, uh, these little picket line, these these kind of like insinuations are really, really racist. They're like, you know, you can't be just saying that about people, bro. Last week, the NFL announced that Jay-Z and his label, Rock Nation, had teamed up with the league for entertainment events and to promote social activism. Kaepernick's been in a long dispute with the NFL and doesn't have a team. The deal, the league will work with Rock Nation on its entertainment performance, such as the Super Bowl halftime show, but also to strengthen community through football and music and NFL's Inspire Change initiative. Inspire Change was created as... a uh, our discussion with players who protested the national anthem, um, a movement sparked by Colin Kaepernick. Jay-Z says the partnership is an opportunity to strengthen the fabric of the community across America, right? So, again, you've seen exactly from Colin Kaepernick's little stand, right, from his one small step that he took, because, again, I think this is good because it shows, you know, you know people say not one individual can do something. Oh, what can, what can I do as one person? It shows you can do quite a lot because look at the, look at the, um, uh, look at how the dominoes fell. As soon as Colin Kaepernick did his one thing, all this other stuff happened, you know, as it continued on. Um, now Jay Z's kind of spearheading this initiative, which sounds pretty cool for the most part. Um, the 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 NFL said it's looking forward to making a com- uh, a difference and driving social change. So what's the controversy? Um, there is anger because Jay Z has teamed up with an organization that some, such as Kaepernick's girlfriend Nessa, feel is actively keeping him unemployed. She wrote on Instagram. So really, how can Jay-Z and the NFL utter um, social justice in their partnership while keeping Colin Kaepernick unemployed because of his social justice work? Kaepernick has been without a team 2017 with allegations of team owners colluding to keep him unsigned in a lawsuit that's now been settled. And according to Mark Gregeros, both the NFL and Jay-Z did not contact Kaepernick during the discussions about the deal. The deal has already been done prior to conversations with Kaepernick that, had, that Jay-Z had and he certainly didn't have any conversations with the NFL. The lawyer said, but Jay-Z says we've moved past kneeling and I think that it's time to go into actionable items and this partnership can inspire and educate. So again, a very strange situation that I'm just not sure on what the kind of the right answer is here because on one side you've got Jay-Z wanting to take this whole social activism thing to the next level in that some kind of change. But then you've got Colin Kaepernick saying, hey, how can you say that when I still haven't got a team? Now that isn't, jay-z's probably level of influence that's where it caps out i don't think is that he has any kind of sway to um get the team owners to hire colin kaepernick to come into a team and also as a team owner i'm not sure if it was if this i'm not sure how it would go but i'm sure if someone was super liberal or super conservative and just was spewing like loads of you know gun um gun control uh, rhetoric or talking about how great Trump is and just you know being in a complete nuisance I'm pretty sure most NFL teams would uh, would still would do the same thing they did to Kaepernick and not sign the guy or you know p- maybe p- keep him away from the press or whatever it may be but it, it wouldn't be welcome back with open arms because they wouldn't want any of the attention to go away from the football right you've seen what's happened with Antonio Brown right the amount of unrest he's causing in the nfl just for simply being a bit of a cock right simply being a bit of an arrogant doof right but nothing too crazy just you know if he he's he very much believes in his own ability so imagine if you're colin kaepernick and you've got the political angle of it you're very confident in your own ability you've got a girlfriend that's incredibly vocal you're representing a minority of people who are also incredibly vocal or who, who feel very un um unjustly represented or unjustly treated right for everything that's happened so far it's probably a recipe for disaster, isn't it? So I'm not sure where I stand with it. But I think in general, we're going in the right direction. I think I'd like to see Colin Kaepernick back in the team again. I think that would maybe be a good way to kind of close the chapter. But I'm also a bit a bit miffed about how he never revealed the details about his settlement, which he probably isn't required to. But if you're going to do this stuff publicly, protesting in such a public world and big platform, you owe the people some kind of information about what you did with that settlement. Like what the settlement entailed, how much you received, did it mean you had to have a gag order, did it mean he couldn't say anything about what he's doing did it mean he couldn't play for another team i want some details that's a bit that's a bit fishy for me but overall i think it's a good deal going forward for hip-hop in general as well for hip-hop too imagine we've got a hip-hop representative directly involved in the nfl um producing the production of the show is going to be incredible i think we saw what rock nation can do in terms of production with that meat meal documentary that's come out that's fucking really really good i wouldn't be surprised that wins some awards um or emmys at least 
Um, so hopefully, again, I'm 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 gonna be patient, just see what's gonna happen on the next cycle. I don't think you know people are talking a bit prematurely now at the moment. I don't think anyone knows what the details are. And again, just maybe that's a, that's the whole premise of social media, right? You talk about things that you don't really know about because you know it's there and you can talk about it. That's the whole point of being on social. But it would be good if people would kind of refrain or keep their opinions to themselves just until we know what the actions are. And even if you don't know what the actions are and you're a bit dubious, I think Jay Z is owed a bit of grace he's owed the benefit of the doubt for all the good work he's done no of all people maybe he's voted i don't know i don't know